fact is the economy is not working for many of our youth. Think about how much richer India would be as a country if its frustrated youth, its women, uh, could get good jobs. India's growth cannot be taken for granted. Our biggest problem is we're not creating enough good jobs. You can see with the protests against the uh, Agni Pat scheme, a lot of young people took to the streets on hearing this, simply because government jobs are, in a sense, the, the last resort, given there are few other jobs available. You've all heard about 12 million applicants in the railways for 35,000 jobs. The worrisome thing about all these people looking for government jobs is not just the fact that you know uh, jobs are so scarce, but the fact that they're so scarce despite the fact that our biggest minority, women, are not really entering the labor force in a big way. Uh, India's female labor force participation is among the lowest in the G20, we rivaled Saudi Arabia for how bad it was for women. And in fact, now Saudi Arabia has become much better because they focused on increasing labor force participation. They've got it up to 33%. We've actually gone down over the pandemic uh, in terms of female labor force participation. Think about how much richer India would be as a country if its frustrated youth its women uh, could get good jobs. And therefore, you know, despite all the rara, strongest growing uh, large economy in the world, etc., etc., the fact is the economy is not working for many of our youth. Our record, I, I don't want to start by saying there's only wrong. In fact, India's record is very good if you look at the two decades after the 1991 reforms. We grew at an average of about 7% a year, which is, you know, with very few exceptions, one of the strongest records. Uh, we have successes, but if we dwell only on them and don't assess our failings critically, we increase the chance of underperformance. And I will argue it's not the fault of our people as much as it is a failure of the imagination of our politics and leadership. And I would say that failure is more recent than in the more distant past when we grew very strongly. What worked in those early decades was really a willingness to trust the people, to create a framework where we liberalized and allowed uh, you know, people to utilize their creativity and enterprise by creating the kinds of frameworks or infrastructure that free. What is the governance vision? The current government's vision seems to center around the term Atman Nirbhar, or self-reliance. We're going to be dependent on ourselves. Sounds good. Uh, and it, in some ways, it is a continuation of the past I was talking about. But in some ways, Atman Nirbhar takes us back to a more distant and failed past, be before the period of reforms, when we focus primarily on physical capital and producing goods, not human capital and services. And we try to do it through protection and subsidies, not through liberalization and competition. So, but one thing that certainly is, is, is worrisome is the neglect of human capital. Think, for example, of how many children have been out of school for the last two or three years. How much have these kids really learned? And if you've been out of school for two years, it doesn't mean that you're two years behind because you've also forgotten two years worth of school. So you're actually three or four years behind, and that's what the studies are showing. These kids are way behind. Why don't you see more concern about this? Why don't you see more uh, money devoted to this? And I would argue that it's partly the responsibility of the states, but it's also partly the responsibility of the center. We are focusing too much on the wrong things it is not physical capital, it is not the PLI scheme which is most important as getting these kids back to school, getting them educated once again. What will it take to increase service exports from India? What do we need to do there? And if we need to choose between putting a dollar of government money here or a dollar of government money there, let's think about 
where it is more appropriate to put that money. India has a lot it can do in services, but relying on its, uh, its, its past of, of uh, demo democratic, liberal openness. And if we do that, we can be the first country that transitions directly from um, uh, agriculture to services without going through manufacturing. Because we're going through a more difficult, different path, we need a government that is more pragmatic, transparent, decentralized, and open to challenge. In other words, we need a learning government, a government that sees what's happening, hears it, and adjusts accordingly. Not a government that says, I know, here it is, take it or leave it.